What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Metal Maniacs podcast presents the last week on Earth. If you're new here, this is our weekly to bi-weekly show that we talk about news topics in the metal and rock world that we find interesting. And we go over new releases in the metal world. And we also talk about Michigan-based bands that have released stuff at the end and go over shows. So... With that being said, I'm your host, Jay Ingersoll, and I'm here, as always, with my co-host. It's your boy, Jay. What's good, Mod? Wait, is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> it's your boy, Jay. <laughs> you are my boy. That's funny. I mean, What's we've good, only Mod? done this 75 times or more, that's, so it's all good. That's, that's the first time I introduced you as me. Yeah, that's cool. We're kind of one in the same, you know? I, uh... I hope they get a kick out of that. I did. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> hey, fun being humans, you know? Just like the text I just sent you that was saying freshening up, and I said fleshing up like I just putting on my skin suit before I came down here. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was fleshening up, too, as I got out of the shower so I could relate. That's Christ. amazing. Yeah, cool. we're, just well, a, we're, just, we're a blooper reel on the go. Let's have it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, that's what makes everything interesting. So, uh, Also, if you're new here, we have a show that comes out every single Tuesday on all streaming platforms and on YouTube, the Metal Maniacs podcast. Go check that out. A lot of the times this podcast will drop, usually on Saturday in the AM. We try to do it every yeah. week. Sometimes there's not enough news to report, so we kind of don't do it, and it's just one more thing to add to the list. But no matter what, you can always check us out on Tuesdays, all streaming yeah. platforms. Then we're our full-length episodes. These, these are more condensed and keep shorter, and we just kind of talk about pertinent on the top of the world topics and yeah. uh yeah so you guys know what to do with that being said also please share like subscribe all that stuff before we get into the show because that helps us a lot and uh it gets us seen in the algorithm which definitely helps our podcast we work very hard on this podcast and uh we enjoy what we do so if you guys could help us out and it's free just to share or show a friend so with that yeah all that we're gonna lead with jay our lead correspondent, and I'm mod today, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys getting it? You getting it at home? Yeah. All right, so That's today, Go ahead, in the buddy. last couple, yeah, in the last couple of days, I noticed that Sonic Temple has announced their headliners for part of the weekend coming up, May 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, um, and the we're going to get a unique headliner this year at Sonic Temple in the form of Metallica. Hmm. Um, they are going to headline two nights this year. It looked like it was Friday and Sunday night with direct support from Rob Zombie on Friday night and Alice in Chains on Sunday night. I see that. Now, Metallica, in addition to the Sonic Temple date, they're doing a tour across the nation similar to this very event where they are doing two headlining nights in every city that they touch and each night is going to be a different set so big news in the world of metallica if you're a metallica fan you can check them out this summer or excuse me uh yeah next summer coming up uh if you miss them one night they're going to be there a second night doing different songs so i think you know that metallica is a band that what goes out and they do like what three hour nights yeah like every night with maybe an opener to kind of warm things up, but they probably play 40 songs a night. And I think they're going to go out and kind of split that up over two nights where everybody gets a chance to hear their favorite song. Um, I myself, not a crazy Rob Zombie fan, but the Alice in Chains thing has got like a little hook in the mouth. Like uh, maybe, you know me, I wear the hat every other show. So mm -hmm. um, that's, that was interesting to me. Like the dual night, headlining uh the festival gig there but also with respect to sonic temple i see that they have also announced kill switch engage will be there on may 8th hell yeah so that's a thursday night i do believe yeah in columbus ohio so i'm pretty high on that festival i just went this summer um, um i so real quick I'll, I'll let you speak to the metallica bit but i also want to pick your brain on this jay because i see this come up from like venue promoters and such a lot of people seem are seemingly opposed to festivals as it seems to be like robbing venues of good tours. Now people want 
tours by bands instead of bands touring on festivals. So my question to you is twofold. Opinions on the Metallica th- tour and then opinions on tours versus festivals. Okay. I have a quick question be- for you before I answer. Have you seen yeah. Metallica? No, I have never. Neither have I. So I, I maybe one day I just couldn't. I don't love them enough to pay 400 for a ticket or whatever they are. That, that That's the only thing, you know. It's like I'd love to see them and check them off the bucket list. But to answer your question, as far as the Metallica thing, I think it's great. Uh, I think it's pretty awesome of what they're doing. I thought it was awesome when they brought Pantera out. I mean, what what two bigger bands could you right. have? I mean, I know it's not OG Pantera, but you got to still respect what those guys are doing, and they're still oh, yeah. playing the songs. Zach's, you know, Charlie's a hell of a drummer. Zach's a hell of a guitar player. So, you know, uh, I got nothing but love for Metallica. I may not be the biggest fan, but kudos to what they're doing. Plus, that helps, you know. I mean, they don't need to make any money at this point, so they're just doing it because they love to do it. They're making a lot yeah. of money. But, you know, oh, yeah. playing two nights in each city, as big as they are right now, it was kind of like when the whole Stranger Things hit. They just, like, catapulted to this whole other yeah. level because of getting an audience they've never been – exposed to before right you're right so, right yeah all these young kids yeah yeah exactly so it's cool for them that they're doing two nights in each city like I, I don't think there's a problem with that but as far as the festival thing goes like a lot of times what i've noticed with the festivals people put on these big you know metal festivals i'm not against them at all i think they're cool we've talked about the ups and downs of them you know being an all-day patron or so on and so forth it takes a lot of fortitude to stick there all day in the sun or or even in a venue when you can't go outside or – you know what I mean? So th- right. that's besides the point. But a lot of times these festivals are, like, booked around tours, though. You know, like – Yeah. When you, yeah. When, you, when you went to Sonic Temple last year, you know, Spite played, uh, you know, Currents played with Dying Wish, and then they yep. were on tour because they played in Detroit. So they had just stopped at Sonic Temple and it made it a stop. So I don't really right. understand why fans are mad that they feel like it's taken away from, you know – the tour maybe bigger bands like Rob Zombie or Alice in Chains or whatever, but also you yeah. got to remember that you know people are busy, so maybe these guys got other things going on. So if, if they just pick and choose a few festivals that work in their favor throughout the year, that could be part of it too. You know, maybe so, we play four big fests instead of right. going on full blown tours. I don't think there's any shortage or lack of tours. Maybe right. Maybe we just need to expand a little bit and start liking other things too, because there's so many tours right now that it's 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 insane to me. Yeah, the, one of the things that I've noticed is like you mentioned, uh, you'll get offshoots from the festivals. So bands are touring on their own tour. Case in point, um, Sleep Token was on a tour, mm. and and Sonic Temple was a part of that tour, and they were touring with another band who was on Sonic Temple, uh, uh, a separate stage that same night. So, you know, they're just kind of making pit stops at these festivals. I've, I've noticed bands that are coming through on, like, Upheaval. Upheaval will have, like, an after party at the intersection. So they'll get bands that are not a part of Upheaval or maybe the prior day or just touring through similarly to Upheaval just coming through. Um, so I think it's kind of a boon to some of these venues where you'll get a band who's on a festival run or they're doing all the festivals like Inc. and... Whatever's happening out in Vegas, I know they got a couple. There's all kinds of festivals, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Fun. So the bands will just kind of like take on, uh, they'll take a tour date from off the festivals and then just do a smaller venue like a club or something. So I, right. I feel like I feel like it helps the clubs. Um, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know why there's an argument against festivals. But as a fan, I will say it's awesome for me because I can't make it to every single show. I can't make it to all these concerts, but then I see a festival like Upheaval and Sonic Temple. And now you're just checking boxes left and right. You're like, oh my god, I get to see you know eight bands on one day, or if you're a festival goer for two days or four days like Sonic Temple, there's a hundred plus bands on Sonic Temple this year. All these announcements are about to roll out. Um, you go for four days. That's first of all, that's insanity to me. I go one day and I'll see like fifteen bands. Is that that's the number I counted off when I went to Sonic Temple this last summer. And then for Upheaval too, I saw similar, like, you know, 10 or more bands in a single day. Yeah. So when you're, when you're talking about 20 to 25 bands over the course of, like, two days, that's awesome. I couldn't ask for anything more because I can't go every weekend to a concert. And I think a lot of people can't. They either work, got kids, both. We got other obligations. So I think festivals are awesome. Um, 
especially for people that are busy. And I know bands are busy too, where they can't they can't always do a tour, so they'll kind of drop it. Like System of a Down, they're not going to get Surge right. off of his thing. Yeah. So Surge is like, I just want to do like one one festival, right? And then it, then it makes seeing System of a Down like a landmark experience because they're only going to do like one show a year, right? So I think and, that that's I, that's a boon for a lot of people. I think it also benefits ticket price because I feel like you're going to pay probably as much as you would for a Metallica ticket as much as you would for a Sonic Temple ticket. So it's like, right. oh, they're just kind of added to the bill, but uh, their ticket price alone would be so much and then you see all these other bands, you know, not taking, I'm not saying Metallica doesn't deserve it. Charge what you want for a ticket. Go ahead, dude. You know, I'm like, they've you earned, deserve it. You they've earned it. the yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm not mad about that. I'm just saying, right. If you buy a Sonic Temple ticket, well, I can see Metallica. Yep. But I can also see all these other bands and yeah, it probably cost about the same amount. So, yeah. you know, I, there's a benefit there too. That's what I was thinking. I seen the news yesterday when they announced it and I was thinking, man, that might be kind of cool to go to Sonic Temple. For one, and yeah. for two, it might be cool just to try to actually see Metallica for a change because I've never been able to see them. So, and I'm sure there's probably all kinds of sweet ass underground bands if they oh, keep yeah. the same type of bands that they had last year because there was probably 35 bands that I would love to see last year. So many yeah. bands, even if it's a couple songs, I could say, hey, at least I've seen that band. Yeah, got to experience them live and and feel the energy they're putting out and watch the fans, you know, that are going crazy, yeah, yeah. moshing and stuff while I'm observing. So, I feel like most I feel like most sets were like thirty to thirty five minutes until you perfect. get to like the the headliners. I think Sleep Token was like an hour, and then Pantera. I have to imagine was an hour plus. Yeah. Um. Ad- admittedly, and I think I've said this a couple times. I made my exit after Sleep Token. I listened to about five or six Pantera songs just in the process of walking out, and they had them on all of the screens. I was not going to try and fight my way into the main seating arena to try to watch Pantera a band I've seen with Dimebag and Vinny and I love Charlie and I think Zach's awesome, but I wasn't really going to like fight my way into that crowd Mm -hmm. having just endured a a sleep token set where they stopped a set twice. There was like three or four medical emergencies. I was like, you know, and 10 hours in the sun, I'm ready to go fam. But, um, I did, I did listen to them and scope them out on the, on the monitors on my way out. So, um, I think that trying to watch Metallica in that, that same setting would be, equally or more difficult to like try and fight your way back into the main stage area to see them you'd have to probably camp out there for half of the day because metallica is you know a hundred times bigger than pantera why lie you know oh, what i mean yeah, so it's, sure. it's, i mean they've been going this whole time too yeah they even taking so, any hiatuses just in between albums so so i thought that was my my lead story was sonic temple just starting to drop da- uh band names for their dates coming up next summer in may so i'm I'm stoked on it. I'm going to try and convince the wifey to go. Um, I had so much fun this last year. I really want to go again. Hell yeah, nice. <laughs> what right, you got cool. for me, Jay? Uh, so I got this story here. For some reason, I always seem to be the guy that picks out all the sad stories or uh, the negative stories, like the bear of bad news, if you will. <laughs> but uh, Valamaya hits a hiatus. So genre-defying metal band Valamaya has, has announced that a hiatus with the members citing the need to reassess their future as a group. So mm. on Thursday, September 19th, which was yesterday, Valamaya shared the following statement on social media. Quote, we have made the difficult decision to put Valamaya on hiatus and will not be performing at any upcoming festivals or tours. This break is necessary for us to reassess our future, and we hope you understand. When the time feels right, we'll update you on what's next for Valamaya. We will be back. Thank you again. So the hiatus comes shortly after the band released their first new studio album in nearly six years titled Mother, which dropped last May in 2023 through their longtime label Sumerian. Mother, badass album. Loved it last year. Mm. Way better than what I thought it was going to be, actually. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, you know, Valamaya, they've been known for, you know, they just have a unique blend of technical groove metal and melodic elements. You know, they're kind of in that gent, deathcore type genre but they are super tight lots of groove to them you know moments of you know guitar prowess like the, the they're very creative and the guitar player shreds so uh and the vocalist has really come a long way as far oh, yeah. as like doing clean vocals his name is yep. lucas and Mag- magyar but uh, yeah, they have come a long way, but the band has consistently pushed the boundaries of heavy music. 2015 Matriarch achieved sig- significant success, reaching number two on Billboard's U.S. Hard Rock and Albums chart 
with their standout tracks like Arias, Lilu, and Makasa. They also toured with prominent acts like Animals as Leaders, Upon a Burning Body, Chelsea Green, and Ocean's Ada, Alaska. So earlier this year, they actually just completed a tour, and they were on tour with Reflections, Alluvial, and Angel Maker. Ooh. And I'm sure fans of Valamea, especially because they had announced a tour. Yeah. I actually didn't put that in my notes there, but they had they were on a tour because I seen that the band that was they were touring with might have been even Signs of the Swarm. They mentioned a comment yeah. to say that that although Valamaya is not going to be co because they were co headliners on okay. this tour, so they had announced like in their comments I've seen that they said, "Don't worry, the tour's still going. It's just Valamaya unfortunately had to drop." So that was my right. story. Anytime you hear news like that of a band that's been going twenty plus years strong. Yeah, I mean, I mean, from where we're at, where we sit in the whole music game, we we understand it. You know, yeah, there comes a time I, where you you must cross that bridge, and maybe things just financially didn't look right to those guys, and uh, right. yeah, just hope the I best feel like, for them. I feel like that is one of the biggest reasons why a band that's been around as long as they have would stop. The money doesn't look right. You know, like they just can't aff can't afford to do it, or they'd be better off working their nine to five at home, which is sad. But yeah, at this stage of the game, you got to imagine somebody's got like a family to take care of. You know, twenty years in the game, I'm I'm willing to bet, and I don't know that they do or don't. But if the money's not there, they can't make a living on it. That's one suspicion that I have. The other one would be, you know, like, hey, we don't get along anymore. <laughs> like, I just, we gotta, we gotta come back to it, like when we can figure it out and work together. So, some one of those things, right? We've seen it before. Uh, we can't do it because of money, or we can't do it because we we're just button heads, and, and tour is not a very good place for us to be right now. But I hope that they're able to figure it out and get back together. I know that. You know, once you you kind of hit a point too, where it's like been there, done that. You know, played all the shows, seen yeah. all the people. Yeah. Um, it it kind of gets to be a little bit grindy, I would imagine. Uh, I I have not been a touring musician, but I've played a lot of shows on the regular, just in town, where you're like, I always loved it. I never got sick of it, but I could see like when you got to drive to Detroit, and then the next day you got to drive to Columbus, and the next day you got to drive to Philadelphia. Like I could see that being a real pain in the dick. Like, <laughs> and you're just me, but I mean, just like, yeah, yeah. You're, you're just waiting. Yeah, hurry you up and wait. There and you just wait. And I, I know a lot of the times when I'm listening to these touring bands and the way they talk, even the bands that we've had on the show that tour, it's just like you're tired all the time. You're not really getting good sleep, you know. So after yeah. a while, that's just got to take a toll on you, you know. Sometimes yeah. you do got to reassess. But, man, hope to see those guys back if they want to come back. Yeah. If they don't, I respect their decision. They've put out some good music. I've always kind of liked yep. those guys. I even think they're, like, from Chicago. So they're, yeah. they're closer to us than what we realize. I so. I have I have loved that band over the years. I don't own anything by them. That's kind of a that's a weird anomaly. I don't know why I don't. I I like everything I hear from them. Um, so I think they're a great band, and I wish them the best. I hope they are able to figure it out and come back. Cool, cool. All right, so I'm gonna bust in some into some new releases. I have quite a few, so I'm gonna try to blast through these as fast as I can, just so you guys aren't listening to me for 40 minutes because we're trying to make these these news ones f fairly short, but. I'm going to just blast through these. It's the last couple of weeks, but a lot of music have, has come out uh, over the last few weeks. So I'm going to just start at the top. And so Luck Won't Save You Through the Mountains of Melancholia. Um, just a quick note on this. Nick, you have to listen to this. It's been a bit since this doer of drummer vocalist Jared Klein, Rivers of Nile, and everything else guy Russell Eck have come together as Luck Won't Save You. As this writing, there are only two songs out in their proggy guest field powerhouses. This record has spots from Bobby, from Cy Cyborg Octopus, Nathan for, from Archaic, and lots more. So, dude, I put on one song in this. I was blown out of my mind how sweet it was. I was All like... Right, let me let me Once, pull up a tab real quick. What's the yeah, name of the band? It's called Luck Won't Save You. And I don't know if you can just get it on Bandcamp because that was the link that I listened to it on. It was actually a, a YouTube link of the song. But I, I didn't listen to this today, but I will be listening to the whole album. I listened to one song, and I was just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. So yeah, with that being it. said, I'm going to move on, but you got to check this out. Check that Heard out. Heard that. Okay. Got it. Oceans of Slumber, Where God's Fear to Speak. Man. 
This is really damn good, too. The description said it was Doom, so it was a little scary. But they have this female singer, and she just writes some cool like uh, vocal patterns, man. So Oceans of Slumber, where God's fear to speak. Great album, too. Uh, Satan, Songs in Crimson. That If you're not familiar with Satan, they're kind of like an old school uh, uh, butt rock, I would say, metal type man. <laughs> so Winterfell, the Imperious Horizon. Really cool black metal. I checked that out. Striper, When We Were Kings. So that's some Christian heavy metal. And that actually came out slamming better than I thought it was going to. Uh, one, 156 Silence. So this is a band I've been seeing a lot about. So I actually listened to this album today. It's called People Watching. And uh, it's kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like a new metal, metalcore type thing. Uh, maybe too many vocals for me, but they did go into some singing, and there's some good songwriting in a lot of space, so it's really good. So, yeah, um, saw them pop up on the satellite. Yeah, they're not a bad band at all, man. Uh, like I said, the the vocalist has good cleans, but like his screaming kind of in the middle of the road, and he kind of doesn't go yeah. out of that, so I guess that's to be desired. So uh, I... Those are the only ones I believe I checked out this week. Uh, one more, and I'll talk on that in a second. But let me just wh- rip through these. Manuel Barbera, Whisper in the Storm. You got Beast Plague, Course Through a Killer. You got Berthold City, Where Did We Go Wrong? Big Big Train, A Flare on the Lens, Bones UK, Soft, Chastity, Self-Titled, Caucus, An Hour of Lies, uh, Consumer... I don't know how to, it's in some other language, so I don't know how to say the name of that. Crowbot, Obsidian, Crypt Crawler, Self Titled, Cursive, Devourer, The Damned AD 2022, Flotsam and Jetsam came out with something. Them guys are still at it. I Am the Weapon, The Funeral Portrait, Greetings from the Suffocate City, Go I Ahead like that and Die. So that's Max Cavalera. It's called Better Dead Than Mainstream. That's actually a, a, a live album. Okay. We got. Helvorn, Espectrus, Gothic Metal, that says. You got Horna, Nyx, also Protection, Galore, Insurrection, Obsolence, Ice Alert, Wounds of Desolation, The Jesus Lizard, that's called Rack, A Killer's Confession, Victim One, Killing Spree, Camouflage, Legions of Doom, The Skull Three. If those guys don't wear those big football pads with the spikes, I'll be pissed. Uh, <laughs> Marson, Dragon of Harmony, Molter K5, Not a Surf, Moon Mirror, The Narrator Lore, Night Wraith, Divergence, Oath Bound, Until It's Gone, Silent Theory, Tell Us How It Ends, Sully, Self Titled, I Will Be Done, Pillar of File, Fire, Trilldom, By the Shadows, Trip to the Morgue, Toe Tagged and Body Bagged. I guess you could tell what kind of band that is just by the name of that. Victory, Circle of Life, Wake the Nations, Wolf Brigade, and Zerta, Zerta. And then let me just go through here and see if there's anything. So you got Dreamless Veil, you got Eclipse, Megalomanium, you got Eradicator, The Paradox, Giant Walker, Silhouettes, Glacial Tomb, Lightless Expanse, Kingdom of Giants, Bleeding Star. That's an EP. That's actually a pretty cool band. I've seen them live. Uh, Kat Von D, she must be an artist now because it's called My Side of the Mountain. Kubla Klan, Kubla Khan. TX, Exhibition oh, yeah. of Powers. I rock this today. If you're a big mm-hmm. fan of beatdown and hardcore and just groove stuff, this album is for you. It, you get what you get from Kubla Khan, but, or Khan, but it's pissed and it's heavy. So if you just want a headbang, super short album too. It's like 23, 26 minutes or something like that. And I love to see albums like that because it's like, cool, you, you gave me what you needed to give me and you got the fuck out of the way. I don't have to listen to 74 <laughs> minutes or whatever you're trying to put out. So I enjoy that. The right. Last Gang, Obscene Daydreams. You got Mork, Siv, Nightwish, Yesterwind, Rainbow, Live at the Mu- Munich, 1977, Seether, The Surface Seems So Far, Skid Row, Live in London, Sweet, Full Circle, Onto Others, Never, Never Land, Vision Divine, Blood and Angels, and Void of Vision, What I Leave Behind. So that's the last two weeks. That's why that list was kind of long. I didn't want to ramble. I actually skipped a few because some of these have descriptions by them, and I just didn't think our audience would be interested in some of this Fair. like yeah yeah maybe they would i mean i know uh, taste can be eclectic like mine and yours are but uh i just kind of stuck with the more metal and hard rock releases so if i skip something bitch at me in the comments appreciate it yeah <laughs> yeah so time for my next story or yep. did you want me to hit up locals okay uh, I'll, go I'll ahead just... with the next story brother yeah so 
Devin Townsend's been making his rounds in the media because he has a new album out. Um, so he's getting a little bit of attention and popping up in interviews. The new album is titled is tra- uh, excuse me, it's titled Power Nerd, and he just dropped a new single called Jainism. There's a video for it too. Okay, and in in the interviews, it's you know he the guy can't avoid the question. When are you going to resurrect Strapping Young Lad? That'd be my and, question. Yeah, <laughs> and and I'm sh- and I'm sh- I'm sure the guy is just so so sick of hearing it, and he's you know, and he's just kind of got to a point where you know, like he just has to answer it without pissing off his fan base. But the quote is, "I just don't want to," and he says that he doesn't want to because. You know, he doesn't feel like he would be coming from a place of authenticity. He he, does, he feels like he would be going out there and just kind of like walking through the motions, and it wouldn't be the person that he is anymore. Like he did Strapping Young Lad when that's the music that he was writing and that's what he was feeling, you know, in his being. And now he's just, you know, he's like 15 years removed or something from Strapping Young Lad, and he's just and he says, "I'm just a different person." So the, I want to try to read the quote from him. Um, interview. Then if oh, he, at, when asked if you know Strapping Young Lad would be the next big band to reunite after Oasis and Lincoln Park are getting together and touring, he says, "No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't talk to anybody in the band anymore. And the person that I am, twenty five years past that, is just I'm a different person, and I don't want to. I think that's my answer, and it's a hard one because that's tinged with guilt because I know other people want it. But if there's anything I've learned over the past couple of years is that I have to pay attention to my own needs, and I just don't want to resurrect strapping at all. So uh, any fans holding their breath for strapping young lad doesn't look like he's coming around to doing that anytime soon. I was lucky enough to see them probably one of the first shows that the new location of the intersection put on. I think it was with like Nile and Napalm Death and strapping young lad. Uh, maybe somebody else was there. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. It was like a killer bill, mm-hmm. and and uh, I I got to see Devin with the skullet making fun of somebody in the audience. Said hey. Somebody was heckling him, and he said, "Nice pullover, you redneck! <laughs> nice, nice pullover coat, you redneck!" So I thought nice. that was hilarious. I did get to see Devin some years later. We did, we both did, um, at, with "Between the Buried and Me." Oh yeah, was on on that bill. Yeah, and uh, so that was a good one. But um, that was yeah, the I th- Devin Townsend band. Yeah, correct. So that he usually pulls from all of his work, but I don't think he ever pulls from Strapping Young Lad to do any material. Like, I mean. I'm not saying that he doesn't ever, but seemingly he he doesn't do it often. So I I feel like that was a newsworthy subject. Like people waiting to hear strapping, don't don't wait. News to me because I I was always wondering. He's so prolific and been so busy over the years and with his own music. And Devin's been one of those where he's got some incredible songs and he's just got some stuff that's kind of hard to sift through just because he puts out so much or has put out so much where, you know, Strapping in the Land for me was like the pinnacle of everything he's done. But I do a lot, like a lot of the Devin Townsend material, like Ocean Machine and though, you know, there's, there's a lot of good stuff that he's done, you know, like Earth Day and, you know. Yeah, Ocean Ocean Machine and Terria both. Yeah, yeah, I I do enjoy a lot of his stuff, but uh, maybe some more stuff I'd have to kind of sift through too because he does have a lot. And I, when we seen the Devin Townsend band, I just thought it was like another project of his. I thought they just played yeah. original music, so I wasn't even sure how that that whole thing went because I've seen him on tour as Devin Townsend, and then I've seen him on tour as Devin Townsend band. So I was like, I'm not I'm not hundred yeah. percent sure. Uh, yeah, what that is. I but think yeah, that's good. I that, think he I think he pulls from various different. Uh, you know, um, projects that he's done when he goes out on tour. So okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I all right, could, cool. Yeah. I, I'm gonna slide in with my last story, and what do you know? Yeah. It's some bad news. Founding Brujera mem- vocalist Juan Brujo has tragically passed away following a heart attack, according to an official statement from the band. Br- Brujo suffered the heart attack on Monday and was rushed to a hospital. Despite the medical team's best efforts, Brujo passed away this morning. The band statement reads, quote, It is with deep sadness that we announce the passing of our leader, Juan Brujo, early Monday morning, after a day off from the Mexercista tour in St. 
Clarisville, Ohio. Juan suffered a heart attack. He was quickly transported to the nearest hospital in Wheeling, West Virginia, by emergency services. But sadly, despite their best efforts, he passed away this morning. Brujo's passing marks another heartbreaking loss for the band, which also mourned the death of their member Pinche Peach earlier this year. Brujera's statement continues, quote, His family, friends, and bandmates are devastated and wish to mourn privately, though they deeply appreciate the love and support from fans for them this difficult time. Brujo was a central figure in Brujera, known for their blend of grindcore and death metal and for their bold lyrical fo- focus on themes of social issues, politics, and Mexican culture. His legacy as a pioneer of extreme metal and powerful voice in the underground scene will continue to resonate with fans in the metal community. So our deepest condolences here at the Metal Maniacs podcast go out to Juan Brujo, his family, friends, and the entire Brujera camp during this incredibly difficult time. It, the the thing that really sucks about that, not just someone passing, it's like they kind of got the thing back together. The, the guy had such an impact on extreme metal. I mean, you got Jeff Walker yep. from Carcass, who was like good yep. friends. I know Carcass, uh, Brujera had different members of different bands in the in the band at different times too, like have for different, you know, things that they would do. So that band is tied to a lot of other bands through a member that they shared or a member that had, were, was in that band for a small period of time. And, uh, there's a lot of cool lore around that band, maybe something that I'd like to go into actually a little bit deeper, but yeah, they were just getting back out there on the road after a long time that they weren't active. And then this, something like this happens. So, uh, man, condolences to him and, yeah, what a, it, what, what a loss! Because I just remember Pinche passed. I just remember seeing the news about yep. that, and that was early two this months. year, a couple months. Yep. Yeah, so yep, two months ago. Yeah, um, well, I know it's a band that's been around for a while. I see that name pop up on the satellite here and there, and I know um, uh, Liquid XM. They got a big fan in uh, their their main host. Is it uh, Jose? Jose Mangan, yeah, he loves it. He plays the shit out of him. So, yeah, obviously a big loss across the board in the metal community. Like you said, Jeff Walker tied to him. Uh, Travis Ryan, big fan. He was, you know, shocked to hear the news and saddened. So um, definitely a band that's been around forever. But also when you talk about, like, Veil of Maya, like putting the band on hiatus, you think age is also a part of it. And then you see guys that are in their 50s and 60s, it's a hard life. It's seemingly a hard life, and if you live it hard, in addition to the touring, yep, might get cut short. Yep. The band is it, sometimes it might be the band or you. So definitely choose choose yourself. But who knows what happened there? That's uh, I think sixty one's too young. Um, I think that's that's not even twenty years away. So yeah. I'm, I'm kind of hoping like at sixty one, I'm still going strong. But yeah, that's that sucks, and uh, definitely sad for them and and friends and family and fans. RIP to one. Yeah. So we've got some submissions uh, today and yesterday, I think it was, from some locals. We'll talk about some new music here and then some shows following that. Cool. Our boy Eric Stroud uh, wanted to pump up the Mercenario Tormented Souls EP. Got a chance to listen to that, and I felt like it sounded like just some OG brutal death metal. Um, Any other descriptors you want to add to that, Jay? You've had a chance to listen to it at all? I actually have not. I did listen to okay. the next thing you're going to talk about, but uh, I didn't. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's it sounded like, yeah, like as mentioned, some old school brutal death metal. The vocals are kind of interesting. Yeah, had, I, actually, uh, I actually lied. I did listen to a track. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And that's not uh, that's not Eric doing vocals. That's the other. It's like a two man band. He does a lot of stuff, and the other guy does right. like the vocals and all the like uh, art. Or, you know, okay, gets all that together, the art and the shirts, and he kind of does all that side. So, yeah, and then Eric also wanted to pump up the Black Temple has a new release, uh, Rise of the Serpents, and they dropped Choir of Chainsaws, which I listened to today as well, and it really took me back to like a Tools of the Trade era carcass. I I actually really dug it. Um, so that was pretty sweet to me. Have you had a chance to listen to any new Black I, Temple? Jay? I did listen to that. I watched the video. Uh, pretty okay. interesting, cool video real to the point hateful lyrics and uh i only know that because it was a lyric video and then the the song itself to me it was just uh it that's also like brutal satanic death metal yep but there's like he specifically put on there not hm2 but the guitar sound that he got out of that just sounds like 
any of that entombed uh dismember like that that kind of tone is what I'm I'm seeing and I'm I'm liking okay. to see Eric's evolution in his recording too because the drums were slapping on this and I feel like he's getting closer and closer to the exact production I want to hear coming out of him but yeah. still great job with it but I just felt like sometimes the guitar's a little a little loud uh and that's <sighs> understandable but uh, I, I need those drums banging, and so I had to hit him up and tell him that I really liked that, and the drums were banging on it. So, yeah, I thought the production was great too on yeah, the, the quality, sure. the quality of the recording. Yep. We've also got Crocophile pumping up their Snake Pit single that I saw drop. So that's some slam for that ass. Uh, we've featured Crocophile on the show before, so yep. they're great. Uh, Another Path, the Dark Season EP. Um, I listened to it. Sounded like some grunge era harder act. Oh yeah, that's our that's my boy uh, yes. Jeremy. DeWitt. Jeremy DeWitt, thank you. Yeah, he, he um, was like, it's not heavy. I'm like, we'll shout you out. You're our friend anyway, so go listen to Another Path, especially if you want to come. Oh, of yeah. More chill well, type stuff. I, I listened to it again, and, oh, man, this guy is so good. Such a great vocalist, and the the cleans on the guitar are, they, it's like a cool drink of water. Uh, I thought the third track on there was, like, the most rocking track, so if you need more upbeat more hard rock. It's definitely the third track uh, listed on his Spotify or Bandcamp, but really great stuff. Monolithic Architecture, Our World Grows Worse debut album, some Detroit Doom. Gave that a little listen, and it's just that. It's some Doom metal, so uh, I think the shortest song listed was just north of six minutes long, and then, so you're in for you're in for a penny, in for a pound there. <laughs> Um, we've got Grapevine Gossip, The Bizarre Adventures of Great Boy. That's so bad. self, yep, self-described swancore, metalcore, post-hardcore. And I thought when I listened to it, um, just in my world of music knowledge, uh, for fans of like a Coheed and Cambria, mm -hmm. Circus Survive, and Protest the Hero, very articulate, very intricate rhythms. They bounce around from clean. And it's it got a lot of different genres kind of melding there, but I still felt like... For a metal show, metal listeners could appreciate it. You're going to have to kind of take some other stuff with it, but they get around to the screaming, they get around to the heavy, hard stuff, so I thought it was really good. Sebastian's um, a good vocalist. Yeah, it sounded great. Um, Witch with Movement 3 in Aeternum. Um, this this track was instrumental, unless I missed a brief vocal. that I, like, I don't know if I was disassociating, but, man, super technical prog metal. Uh, I wouldn't say death metal necessarily, but... Uh, it's heavy. It's super technical. Well, he, uh, I believe the guy's name is Mike, and his band, we featured a song of his actual band on the show. Now, I can't, now his band's name is just escaping me because I have so many band names in, in my head. Right, uh, right. But let me see if I can pull this up real quick because I remember Jeff, uh, oh, Living Dissection. Remember that oh, okay, band yep. that were like super heavy slam and they had like the robes on in there in the woods and yes. everything? Yep. That's his band. So okay. this, this is kind of like his solo type project or whatever. So shout out Witch. Check that out. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. Great work. Um, our boy Chase Dunklenberg wanted to gas up his project, Twilight's Umbra. I figured he submitted, so I will shout it out. Uh, yeah, he they... was like, uh, is 2022 recent and i'm like no we're talking like two months but we'll shout you out chase because you always support yeah. us and check yeah. out twilight's umbra it was great music yeah. too so go check yeah i love it the track they submitted was nightfall from their self-titled release so they had a guest vocalist on that it's definitely of the tech deathcore genre uh chase is an amazing guitarist um if i could yeah. snatch him up to be in a band i would do that yeah, so um uh or you know in his case he snatch me up hit me up chase <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you need the uh, we, rest of the guys too, probably. No, yeah, that's that's the thing. He probably wants a drummer more than a bassist. Um, I've got four. I am genocide from you. Two thousand years ago uh, was released sometime this year, twenty twenty four. Deathcore with an insane drummer and a really cool vocalist. I noted. Um, at the my first listen, like I'm hearing this today, and I'm like, that's not a real drummer. But the first member mentioned was the founding member was the drummer. So I'm like, okay obviously a real drummer uh the double kicks were so fast i i was in disbelief so i'm friends with him uh, on facebook so i'm very familiar with for i am genocide yeah it's it was insane um i i would call it deathcore but of the of the utmost heavy variety right there death metal-esque um 
You know, the, the reason I hesitate to say death metal anymore is because people get that like '90s OG brutal death metal in their brain, like Deicide or Cannibal Corpse. And I think it'd be fair to call them death metal too. It's just more modern, uh, more like a Shadow of Intent style, minus the orchestra. Uh, we've also got the Wretched Hive with Cage and Eight Ball Eye, a uh, single that they released. Uh, to me, it was kind of a stoner rock, stoner metal featuring a clean vocalist and a lot of you know like rock guitar licks but i thought you know it's organic hard rock i i would pump it up on the show and i thought it was pretty cool and then lastly world of malice with their self-titled i gave that a spin today and that was some slam if i ever um i could be misnomering it there but sounded like slam to me similar to the crocophile fan base i would imagine if you like one you like the other nice uh, so those were the new releases that were submitted to us. And again, if they submit directly to our webpage or you know slide in our DMs or a post that we make, uh, I think that would be huge. And that way we'd have it all. Instead of going to your personal profile, we could just get it right on our page. Exactly, Maybe that's something yeah. we gotta, so we we'll have to, have to dial that in. That. Um, I'm going to yeah. shout this out real quick before you... Uh, so this band hit me up called Blood Crusher. They just put out a EP called... Paragon of Filth. So that's a new band or a new EP from a band called Blood Crusher. I just they hit me up today, asked us if we'd review something, and it just came out. They gave us a link, so that's something you and I can discuss here after the show. Yeah. But uh, I just figured I'd shout that out because they hit me up today about that. So okay, so um, go ahead. I was just say what you got for shows, buddy. For shows, um, our boy Mike certainly hit us up about a show they've got going on tomorrow with Flexible and special guest Kyle Brown in the Human Condition. Um, since this episode is coming out tomorrow, uh, that'll be today. If you're listening, a $10 cover at Billy's Lounge, September 21st, so Saturday. Uh, happening tonight, we've got Flexidecibel. And uh, definitely for the funk crowd, not a metal show. but Great they, band, though. Great yes. Band. Great music. You love good songs. They're all awesome musicians and then yes that, the kyle brown in the human condition that's also his band that he plays in too he plays drums in that but that's yeah. a really good band of like singer songwriter type stuff and they are really okay. good too completely different than flex of decibel not funky and all that type okay. stuff you won't hear that but you will hear some good nice like kind of rock singer songwriter type stuff from them so uh it, it, hey it doesn't have to be metal but uh great musicians they so well, they they follow when they submitted. Yeah, they follow hey. and they submitted. So here yeah. we go. Uh, we're we're gassing you up. And I gotta say, having seen Flex of Dust Bowl, you're in for a good time. Doesn't matter who you are and what you like. You yep. want to see a room full of people dancing. You got some extra energy. You want to go to a bar that's got people out at it. You want to be there. So yes. check those guys out. Yes. Um, we got a couple of shows coming up on October 5th. First, we'll talk about the one closest to home. Uh, we got Carnival Festival happening in Door, Michigan on October 5th. That's a Saturday. It's going to be a $20 show in advance, 25 day of. I noted bands. W so it's at, um, the venue is Witches of New Salem Haunt Ooh. in Door, in Door, Michigan. And I noted bands, He Who Dwells, Final Confession, and The Outliers, plus more, about seven more bands. Uh, those are the ones that I was familiar with. That place is awesome, dude. Okay, so the, which uh, is a new Salem? Uh, yeah, they must be having bands there this year, uh, or like must be. Would you say October fifth? So early in the season. Yep. But I've went to the haunted like what they have there because it's it's one of the things we actually brought up when we were talking to Michael Glover about his haunted attraction was the right. which is a new Salem. And okay. uh, man, that's an immaculate, badass haunt there. So. Nice. It's a show is being put on by Roxo the Pit Clown. Don't know if you've ever seen this guy out, but I caught him at Sonic Temple. I've never or, seen him out, but I've I've seen I know I've seen tons of pictures of him at shows and shit. Might might be a guy that we've got to get on the show. He was also out at Upheaval, so I saw him at two festivals this year, just out in his clown gear. Um, we've also got. I'm gonna just quick shout this one out. Now, this would be a drive for some super fans, but. We've got THV submitted a show that they're doing live at Healer on um, 3631 East Raymond Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. So about a four and a half to five hour drive if you're coming from our area in Michigan. That's an all ages show. Doors at seven, ten dollar cover featuring THV, Mr. Clit, Heaven and Ritual, and the Lunch Club. Mr. So, Clit found him. <laughs> 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 We've, we finally found it. It was on a mister. Been looking for him. <laughs> yep. But, but we found him. The little man in the canoe. 
Um, <laughs> a little bean boat. <laughs> so thanks, Found Ed. Him. Thanks, Evan, yeah, for the submission. Uh, so hopefully you can steer a couple of people to drive down to Indianapolis to support y'all. And the last show I've got submitted was the Halloween Bash, Saturday, October 26th. It's a costume party, $10 at the jo- the Jolly Llama. Say that 10 times fast. Yep. It did it did say to DM for the address. So yeah, that's that's a house show. Okay. Yeah, and obviously we're not going to shout out somebody's home address. You're going to have to dig for that if you really want to go. It says Doors at 8, Music at 9. Um, if you know members of the bands Accuser of the Brethren, Let It Rot, Dropped at Birth, or Implicator, this is your ticket to get the address. You want to slide into those DMs or people in those bands and ask them about the Halloween Bash costume party taking place Saturday, October 26th at the Jolly Llama. Well, I know all of them, so cool, cool. There you go. That's what I got for shows, brother. You want to wrap this up? What else we got? Anything? That's about it, man. Uh, All right, Just make sure you guys go listen to this week's episode. If you're seeing this and you want more Metal Maniacs podcast, we have an awesome episode that just came out on Tuesday. It's actually doing really well. A lot of people had a lot of good things to say about it. I thought it was a great conversation. So uh, it's about it's uh, we picked our top ten deathcore bands, but we we go in depth in the topic of deathcore. We kind of cover what it is, and we talk way more about way more bands than the, the 10 our top 10 we just talk about our top right. 10 and then we talk about a whole lot more and everybody that's commented or personally dm'd or anything all the bands that they've spoke of we pretty much speak about on there we yeah. both kicking ourselves in the ass for not saying dying wish because they probably would have made my top five because i love dying wish uh they are my, a newer band i haven't been listening to them for 20 years like i have despised yeah. icon but yeah. uh dying and wish I, and definitely I, a badass band i mean shit. yeah and i think it in all fairness to ourselves and the other 10 bands that we mentioned i think the fact that they've only been around for a little bit of time is a reason why it's easy to overlook and it's kind of hard to say you're a top deathcore band of all time when you've only been around for i don't know a couple of albums tops like they haven't been around for too long no. and it was i was 5 minutes away from your house and i wanted to pull over and cry for not saying their name because you- i just saw them I just saw them at Sonic Temple, and they were the like the main first band up, and that, like to kick off the show, and it yeah. was like, I'm awake now, like they oh they kicked ass. I love yeah. that band so much. So yeah, the but- only the only band that didn't get name dropped on that show were were like profusely apologetic about it. But um yeah we we I know we both love them, and I got to thank you for like turning me on to that band because I absolutely love them. Yeah, they rule. So yeah. That's that's all I got to go over, man. I hope you have a good weekend or at least a good Saturday. I know I'm going to – I'm actually going into zero dark 30 mode. Like, I'm not doing anything tomorrow, so I'm trying to get everything done today. Just need a, what, a day that the wife and I sit and just, like, binge some TV, something I never do or I try to do – once every six months but tomorrow's going to be that day so i got a bunch of shit nice. to do today and uh but i will see you sunday and yeah that being said much love to y'all I, uh, metal. oh what's up go ahead oh yeah Sorry. i was gonna just i was gonna say i'm doing the opposite i'm going to see megadeth mudvayne and all that remains tomorrow night oh okay so cool. i'll be i'll be in detroit overnight i gotta make sure that the whole gang gets up and gets going in the morning so i can make it to you it's looking like 12 o'clock i hope to be rolling up to your house at 12 o'clock on sunday afternoon it's out of my hands but i already we, we spoke about it don't worry guys we'll do a show we'll figure it out oh there'll um, always be a show don't worry yeah yeah there's always going to be a show but um jay that's what i got going on tomorrow the opposite of zero dark 30 yeah. <laughs> going to a going to a show at least it's metal related hell yeah all right brother so, well y'all keep for it sure metal. for sure peace later Later.